saw in the, in the uh, uh, spring, but then the next year you might be involved in running cross country and swimming and something else. So that you got quite well rounded as far as your participation in athletics was concerned. Uh, also, uh, in your uh, three upper class years, um, as I say, it was much more relaxed as far as I was concerned. There was limited dating permitted as far as uh, the weekends was concerned. And that, of course, sports, uh, varsity sports at, at all the service academies, it's a very, very big thing. In the fall, of course, it was football games at Mikey Stadium and the annual trip down to Philadelphia for the Army-Navy game. Uh, and in, in those days, we took trains down. We took three trains down to that Army-Navy game. Um, yeah, so uh, lots of opportunities there. And uh, they even have or had at that time a, a, the office of the cadet hostess. West Point had an official hostess who, if you wanted to, as we called it at that time, drag or date that weekend, they had contacts with various uh, girls' schools around that area, Fremont schools and that, and could arrange encounters for you. <laughs> and of course, there was always the girlfriend back home uh, that write to, and, and very often they were quite anxious to come up to West Point to visit because of the the majesty of the place and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, the close proximity to New York City, did you get a, you get an opportunity to... Yes. Uh, now, uh, <coughs> at the time I was there, your first year, you had to spend the entire year there to include Christmas. You, got, you could not leave the post other than to go to official functions such as the, the Army-Navy football game. Um, during your sophomore or yearling year or your third year, your cow year, um, once again you had opportunities to leave and you could also go home on uh, Christmas leave and spring leave as far as that was concerned and also you got a month off in the summer uh, for summer vacation. Uh, during your, your senior year uh, you got some weekends where you could actually leave the academy for the entire weekend as long as you were back by six o'clock on Sunday evening. So, um, and, and of course your, your grades had to be up to snuff and your disciplinary record had to be good. So as a first day you, you had uh, probably, as I recall, four or five opportunities to get away from the, from, uh, the uh, academy on weekends as well as your, your uh, normal uh, Christmas and, and spring vacation. So you're you're doing all your PT, you're doing classroom stuff, you're doing whatever uh, sport that they, you, you're in, uh, but I would also presume you're also specializing in some field in the Army? Or you, no? No, at that time uh, the curriculum was, uh, for all cadets, was identical. Okay. Uh, the only uh, difference you might encounter was uh, your first two years, the foreign language that you might have taken, uh, whether it was German, French, Spanish, or Russian, I believe it was. Um, and uh, that was the only deviation as far as curriculum was concerned for all cadets. Now, that's not to say we were all in the same grade level. Uh, we were graded every week and uh, those uh, grades were posted and then that determined what section you might be in for an instance a academically gifted uh, cadet would be in a higher section than someone who might be a little bit more challenged. Uh, needless to say uh, uh, I spent a good deal of my time in what we call the GOAT sections. Uh, I graduated uh, in the lower quarter of my class, as far as that was concerned. So uh, it's um, so everybody studies the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So uh, then, obviously, graduation comes along, and that must be an experience. It it certainly was a uh, uh, what they call June week. Uh, they still call it June week, even now it uh, it happens in May. But uh, when I graduated, it was in June. I, I graduated June the fourth, fifty seven and was immediately commissioned a second lieutenant in the Army.